Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So unless you've gone against the tide and use a Mac or some flavor of Linux, you probably have a desktop or laptop running Windows, for better or for worse. But how is it that Microsoft managed to be the dominant player on PCs, yet be almost invisible on smartphones that we're all carrying everywhere? Well, believe it or not, it wasn't too long ago that the Windows Mobile OS was actually the market leader on smartphones. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, about that. So, before the original iPhone was released in 2007, the smartphone market was a mishmash of lots of different devices, without any real must-have models among them, and many of them ran Windows Mobile. So many, in fact, that Microsoft owned nearly half of smartphone OS market share before Apple got into the game. So what happened? Well, even though Microsoft's presence in smartphone land was very significant, it was still a company whose bread and butter was software for traditional PCs. And their management at the time wanted to be cautious about throwing themselves headfirst into mobile, skeptical as to whether it would catch on. As a result, Microsoft didn't devote enough resources to Windows Mobile, which quickly became dated, while at the same time, Apple's iOS rapidly gained popularity. Making matters worse, the Windows Mobile experience felt a little different depending on which phone out of that mishmash of devices I mentioned earlier you were using. Something that makes a software product very difficult to market to users. But hold on a minute, Android does this. So why did Google succeed where Microsoft didn't? Well, by the time Microsoft decided it really should be focusing more attention on the mobile market, Android had already become widespread. And not only was it technologically superior to Microsoft's outdated offering, but it was also free. By contrast, Microsoft charged phone manufacturers for Windows Mobile licenses, just like you have to pay for a Windows license for your home PC today. Now, Microsoft justified this because they thought Android was too bare bones and would cause fragmentation of the market. Sound familiar? But what actually happened is that it gave the phone industry a freely available base that included tons of Google services that people actually wanted to use. So in 2010, Microsoft, realizing the PC was losing ground to mobile devices, decided to take its mobile competition seriously and replace Windows Mobile with Windows Phone OS. But while reviews of the OS were actually pretty good, one of the main issues was that by this point, app developers were already focused on iOS and Android. So it became a chicken and egg problem. There weren't enough Windows Phone users for app developers, even big ones like Instagram, to bother to support the platform. And it's hard to attract users without, like, a YouTube app. All this came to a head in 2014, when Microsoft bought Nokia's phone division, hoping their name and market power would give Windows Phone a boost and show the world, hey look, Windows Phone is worth something, it's going to be all over Nokia devices. But this backfired catastrophically. There was still no incentive for non-Nokia manufacturers to pay for Windows Phone licenses, because now not only was it not free like Android, but their Windows Phone models would also have to compete against Nokia's phone division which was now owned by the same flippin' company, the one they were paying. So in 2017, the Windows Phone project was finally put out of its misery, and Microsoft is now focusing its mobile efforts on cheaper laptops, the Internet of Things, and getting its digital assistant Cortana onto more devices. So there may be an important place yet for Microsoft in this new world where it seems like everything needs to be connected to the Internet. But don't expect your friends to be impressed by your Windows Phone unless they also love your dope HD DVD player and your lit Flip HD video camera. And speaking of being impressed, do you want an impressive solution for protecting your privacy and getting around geoblocking? Well then check out Private Internet Access VPN. Not only does PIA work on up to five devices at once by hiding your true IP address and allowing you to bypass geo restrictions and censorship by making you appear that you're connecting from somewhere else, it also blocks unwanted connections to help prevent attacks, auto blocks all traffic if the VPN disconnects, keeps your data out of the hands of advertisers and other snoops who are tracking your activity, prevents DNS leaks, and even includes MACE, PIA's built-in malware blocker. PIA supports multiple VPN protocols and encryption levels, allowing you to dial in the exact level of protection that you need. They have apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, and a Chrome extension, with support for more platforms coming soon. And PIA has over 3,000 servers in 28 countries and does not log user activity. So what are you waiting for? Check them out today at the link below. Okay guys, thanks for watching TechWiki. Like, dislike, check out other channels, leave a comment below with your ideas for future videos, and don't forget to subscribe.